While Leon is eating peas, I just ordered him an even larger, beautiful new aquarium. It should be here in a few weeks. It'll be much wider and have even more floor space for him to graze and explore. In the meantime, Leon would like to answer some of the most asked questions in the comments section. I, th I think I'm speaking a third person here or something, or Leon speaking through me. <laughs> anyway, let's just go with it. Brandy asks, why did you put him in such a dirty ass tank? Jasmine asks, why is the tank so gross when you put him in? Another viewer says, why did you put him in a tank with so much mold in it? And another, bro, the lobster should have stayed in the box. That tank is greener than Shriek. <laughs> <laughs> I think he meant Shrek. Okay, it does look a little unkept. So, first the green stuff in the empty tank is algae. And green algae growing in any aquarium or garden pond is almost always a sign that the water is healthy. It supports life, and when algae is thriving like that, it's also cleaning and filtering the water. The pH, the salinity, and other water parameters were kept in check, though the aquarium stayed empty for months. When I bought Leon from the grocery store, it was literally a spontaneous decision when I was standing there. I knew I had an empty aquarium sitting full of salt water at home, and I knew I had a safe place to put him if I bought him. Then when I got Leon home, my first priority was to get him out of this cardboard box and back into some water. Normally lobsters are sold live to be eaten within a few hours, so they're not packed like a fish from an aquarium store would be packed. My goal, though, was to see how long this grocery store lobster would or could live in an aquarium. So I wanted to give him every chance for life. Leaving him in the cardboard box on the kitchen counter while I cleaned the algae out of the aquarium wasn't an option and wasn't even on my mind. Because I've kept aquatic pets for years and I know as ugly as the algae was to some, it wasn't an issue to Leon's health at all. In fact, eating the carpety algae helped Leon get his strength back and get healthy again. Barnacles infesting the whole tank. RG says, It causes so much anxiety to see there are barnacles all over its claws and you didn't even try to remove those parasites. Now the eggs are in the water and you'll have to deal with them for as long as you own the tank. Yes, when the rubber bands were cut off of Leon's claws, there were barnacles growing under the bands. And thriving, actually. But when Leon had his claws free, he cleaned those barnacles off of himself within a few days. I haven't seen any barnacles growing in the new tank he's in, or any in the older 55 tank he was in when I bought him. So if there were any barnacle larvae, either Leon ate them or the killifish ate them. He's been here almost a year now. This is interesting and on the same subject. Earlier this week, I was out of town for a couple of days. When I came home, Leon was partying with a house guest. This is a sea worm, sometimes called a clam worm or ragworm. They have four eyes and they bite. That is good nightmare material right there. This is the first time I've seen this worm in the aquarium, and I only saw it for a day. The moon was full, so it was likely in its reproductive phase called epitope. They die soon after this phase, so I guess that's the last Leon and I will see of his friend, the sea worm. It probably came in as larvae with the killifish, the oyster cluster, or seaweed. I've seen swarms of these on the South Carolina coast before. They are beautiful and strange, actually. Another common question is, how old is Leon the lobster? Leon weighed 1.86 pounds when I bought him. A lobster's age is generally his weight multiplied by four plus three years. So 1.86 times four is 7.44 plus three equals 10.44. So this calculation would put Leon at about 10 to 11 years old when I bought him. And he has now been here with me for almost a year. This calculation can vary based on water temperatures and available food. And there's a new DNA test that is more accurate, but this is a good ballpark. Leon is about 11 or 12 years old now. How long can lobsters live out of water? 
If a lobster is kept cool and moist, it can live out of water for about 36 hours. Leon's drive from the grocery store to my house was about 20 minutes, and he was in the aquarium here within 25 minutes of leaving the grocery store display tank. Cotton asks, I don't understand why you don't just grab Leon with your hand instead of a net. I've gotten bitten, stung, chased, and harassed by a lot of animals. So I ain't scared. I mean, I'm not afraid. I had a few reasons for picking Leon up with a net rather than my hand though. First, with a net it looks and seems less like I'm directly attacking Leon. I don't ever want Leon seeing me as the enemy directly. Number two, I didn't know how hard a solid Leon's shell was. He came from the grocery store in pretty poor health. I didn't want to risk squeezing him and cracking or hurting his shell or his legs, or worse, dropping him on the cement floor here on the way to the new aquarium. Third, I'd have to stand up on something to get my arm down into the aquarium, then hop back down with him in my hand. Using the net was all around a safer option. Just dip him out and bunny hop him over to the new aquarium. He didn't go as willingly as I wanted, but it was a safe transfer. This is an interesting comment. Leon is just in prison. He should be killed and eaten rather than be forced to live in an aquarium. My answer to this is, Leon spends zero time trying to get out of the aquarium. Put these locks on the top of the aquarium to be sure he doesn't climb out, but they've never been needed so far. Leon seems content in his aquarium and seems to enjoy his daily routines. I think he enjoys his life here. Are the clicks Leon makes when he clamps his claws on something the real sound? or a fake sound added. These sounds are the actual sound of Leon clamping onto the plastic tongs. They're recorded underwater. Have you considered having a live stream of Leon running 24-7? <laughs> yeah, I have actually, but I don't think any of you want to see a reflection of me walking around the house in my underwear. Can you show us some more of your koi? We've had heavy rains here every night for the past week, so the water is a bit murky right now. Typical southern summers. This is a female sanke. She is 15 years old. She was born on my farm here in the Carolinas. This is one of her sons. This is a male Goshki, also 15 years old. Oh. This is a Yamabuki Ogon, originating from Japanese parents.
Kohaku and another Kohaku. I don't classify my koi these days as show koi or pond grade koi. I enjoy them all as pets. No stress, no critical eye, just fun and enjoyment. What is the salt level and temperature of Leon's Aquarium? Leon's water starts as reverse osmosis water, converted from well water here. Then marine aquarium salt is added for a specific gravity of 1.022, or around 30 parts per thousand salinity. The water is chilled and stays at 64 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay, here we go. Have you eaten lobster since you got Leon? I have not eaten lobster since Leon came to live here. Lobster is so delicious, unfortunately. Even Leon would eat lobster. It's that good. Rescuing Leon from the grocery store, though, wasn't a statement against the meat industry. It was just something I personally wanted to do, an experiment and a curiosity. I personally won't be eating lobster anytime soon, but I don't frown on people that do. <laughs> I understand. So lobsters have two separate type claws? Are they always on the same side? Yes, lobsters have two separate tools or claws, the pincher claw and the crusher claw. And they are not always on the same side. Since having Leon here almost a year now, it's weird for me to see other lobsters with their crusher claw on a different side than Leon's. How did you choose Leon over the other lobsters in the tank at the grocery store? That's a very good question. I'm not sure exactly. I think I chose him because he was sitting in the corner by himself, looking a little helpless and hopeless. I'm not a bleeding heart, but I am empathetic. And I was drawn to this lobster sitting there looking helpless and defeated. Can my friends and I come over to your house and meet Leon in person? Uh, um. This has been a common question too. How can you rescue Leon and then feed him live worms and live clams? Another viewer, why did you rescue Leon from the grocery store and then feed him live clams and live earthworms? That's a complicated question and a tough one, but with a pretty simple answer. It's a fact of nature that a lot of animals eat other animals. A lot of animals require meat in their diet. Leon does. If you've ever watched video footage of a lion chasing down a gazelle or a pod of killer whales chasing down seals, it's brutal, but it's a fact of nature. Here these guys bought minnows, small fish, bait, to use to catch bigger fish. And while they weren't looking, this heron strolled over and ate the minnows out of their bucket. That's nature. Again, that is a tough question. Feeding Leon earthworms absolutely gave him strength and energy to survive and thrive. And just that he had to catch them to eat them helped improve his dexterity and make his muscles strong again. In analyzing life, I like to use the term, we can't save all the kittens. It's impossible to save all the animals in the world, but we can each at least do a small part here and there. My girlfriend and I together have 11 rescue cats. Several were feral and have been taken in, spayed, neutered, and given a permanent caring home for the rest of their lives at our expense. I would love to save more lobsters, more of Leon's friends, but that's obviously impossible to do. But I do some. We should all do some. I think we should. Overall, I keep a small footprint here on Earth. I try to use a minimum of plastic bags, for instance. I try not to be wasteful. Even leftovers that I don't eat, or Leon doesn't eat, or the koi don't eat, or the cats don't eat, those leftovers will go into the woods for other animals to eat. This is interesting for fellow nature nerds. This box turtle came to eat leftovers the other morning. I thought I recognized it. This is the same male box turtle almost exactly a year earlier eating watermelon leftovers here in the yard. I wonder how old he is. Here a possum has found the food I put out. 
and you can see the eyes in the background of either a feral cat or a neighbor's cat that's also coming to eat. They stay pretty civilized with each other. Well, they don't eat together, but each of them has an opportunity to eat. The cat ends up dominating the food and the possum waits in the background for any leftovers. This is another example of why we should always spay and neuter our domestic cats and dogs. This cat, feral, or a neighborhood pet, who is an invasive species, totally dominated the food. Should I set up a trap and catch this cat and spay and neuter it? Check it for feline leukemia, ear mites, deworm it, and take it in? So you can see how difficult the situation can be to save animals from nature's course. I would like to rescue another lobster at some point, but a big part of good pet care is good management. In other words, I don't think we should bite off more than we can chew. Sometimes getting other pets just takes away from the quality of life for the pets we already have. So that's something to consider. Having two really large aquariums would definitely be a lot of work. Water changes, maintaining water quality, and having a solid location on a cement floor. Water weighs over eight pounds per gallon, so a 200 gallon aquarium with gravel and rock can easily weigh over 2,400 pounds, so things have to be thought out and managed. The other day when I was buying groceries, I cruised by the lobster tank again and saw this large lobster in there that was just about to molt and this small lobster with only one claw. Obviously, I wanted to scoop them both up and take them home with me. It's a wonderful and positive thing to be sympathetic to all living creatures, but we also have to be logical and understand nature and nature's course. We're just a part of that. And fortunately, we have been given the capacity to do good when we can. Obviously, comment if you think I'm wrong or if your opinion is different. The question most often asked in the comments is, why don't you get Leon a girlfriend? <laughs> first, <laughs> first they would fight, and in the confined space of even a very large aquarium, neither lobster would have the space to get away from the battle. This is Leon right after he molted. He was extremely vulnerable and weak for at least a day after that. So imagine what another lobster would do to Leon right now. Also, Leon comes from the grocery store. It would be hard to find a confirmed female from the grocery store. Do you stand there in the seafood section asking the seafood clerk to lift every lobster out, turn it over and check the sex? He's selling you a food product. Generally, a lot of female lobsters are returned to the sea and males are sent to the supermarket for sale. Also, lobsters are solitary animals. They like being by themselves. A lot of animals are like that. Some people are too. As always, please feel free to comment if you agree or if you disagree with me on any of this. I enjoy reading your thoughts and perspectives, and other viewers do too. It's great to look through and see a comment turn into a long thread of people sharing and actually having a cool, positive conversation here on YouTube about their techniques, their lives, or their experiences. We all have a unique journey and a unique view of this life we wander through. I'll have a new update soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and feel free to share it with friends you think might like meeting Leon and following his journey. We'll see you soon. <laughs>